we're going to talk about the five signs of a cult. So let's get into that. First thing is, a cult is not merely a religion that you don't like or that you don't agree with. That doesn't make it a cult. Okay, so just because you've never heard of it before, or you don't agree with it, or you don't like it, that doesn't mean it's a cult. It has nothing to do with our feelings. It has to do with facts, okay? So we have to remove prejudice and think about, okay, but what is real? What makes a cult a cult? Because people throw that word around. I'm gonna give you a practical checklist that you can see, does this group of people or organization, because it could be an actual organization or it could just be a group of people, um, do they check the boxes off that they're a cult? So for this first one, when it comes to the leader, we'll just say the leader, well, when it comes to the leader, they're always right. They never have to adjust their views, no matter how inappropriate they are. They're never wrong. And you should be grateful for the privilege. Everybody defends them, no matter how wrong they might be, no matter how inappropriate they might be. They're untouchable. And they will not admit, hey, I'm imperfect. They will present to you, I'm infallible. Don't you understand that? How dare you question me? They will never admit, well, you know, I really did have the understanding this, but I've come to realize that I need to adjust that. This is what it is. I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm not perfect. That is not typical of a cult leader. Cult leader is always right, and don't you dare challenge them, or they and their flying monkeys will make you really regret it. Yes, I said flying monkeys. So that now we're going to go into number two. Number two is they're really funny about money, especially about your money. They want to know about, excuse me, they want to know about your money. They would like you to provide check stubs or give personal information about your money, where you work, how much you make, your bank accounts. If you're dealing with a group of people that want to know your salary and they're supposedly spiritually or uplifting you, or even non-spiritual groups, but it's still a cult because not all cults are religious, if they feel that they have the right, they impress it upon you that they have the right to your financial information, and indeed, to t take over your finances, that's cultish. Your money is your money, it's not their money, and your contribution should be voluntary. If they're constantly asking you or demanding money from you, and if you have no right to question, well, where's the money going? Oh, it's going to the building project and you need you said you need X amount of money and I gave X amount of money and so and so gave X amount of money and stuff. So you actually have you met your goal or you exceeded your goal. Why are you asking or demanding more money from me? And I just, you know, got paid and paid you out of that, for example. Oh. And if you do that, you deal with wrath, okay? Oh, a lot of wrath and a lot of shaming and ooh, wee, it, it gets ugly about your money it's your money your money that comes from your work or your um what do you call it your fund your income that has your name on it it's yours and people do not have the right to just take it from you and act like you're wrong to ask where is it going that's your money so when you're dealing with a group, and that includes, but it is not limited only to religious groups, and they act like your money is not your money, it's their money, that's a problem, and that's cult behavior. So if they cannot be transparent about the money that people put in, right, and, the, and if they're constantly wanting to get their hands on your money, and you can never give enough, and they want to get private information, like your social security number and things like that, your bank account number, that is cult behavior and that is overstepping boundaries. So that's a sign. Number three, they attempt to find out who you are and then they proceed to attempt to crush you. How do they do that? 
well, besides the normal con man practice of sizing you up, they may ask you, what are your dreams? What are your hopes? What's the most valuable thing to you? And then you trusting them instead of protecting yourself, tell them you show your most vulnerable part, the thing that's most precious to you. And what do they do? They turn around and smash it in front of you. And if you say it's your family, they start telling you negative things about your family. About your family. Now, there are many of us that we don't need anybody to tell us negative things about our family because we're in our families with our eyes open, okay? But there's a difference between your family dynamics and then somebody else coming in and trying to separate you from your family, which is actually a sub-dynamic of its own. Or you say, um, well, it's, it's my medical career and healing people, or it's my art that I do, or it's gardening, or whatever it is, they attack it. They go after what's most precious or what you identify as the core inner you, and they seek to just stomp it and tear it down. And I'm smiling because if it wasn't so awful, it really would be funny, you know? They try to find out who you are so they can destroy it, so they can make a new you. But they need to find out who you are so they can know how to get to you and how to hurt you and to use that again against you should you step out of line. So they want to know who you are, not to help you, but to help them keep you in your supposed place, which is under their heel and under their control. That is cold behavior. Number four. Number four is the use of fear as a weapon, fear of humiliation, especially public humiliation. And this could be based on information that you rather foolishly gave to them. Um, this can be just on observing you or maybe knowing about your family of origin or your culture or the region that you're from, the types of things that may trigger you, get under your skin and upset you. So they want to keep you in a state of fear of displeasing them. Not the creator, but them to keep you in line. So that it's a form of emotional, spiritual, psychological bullying. And it also can, of course, include financial bullying, control, because that's what it's about. It's about control. And if you're afraid then you can be controlled. See, if you're at peace and you have confidence, it's hard to control a person like that. But if you're, you're walking around nervous and you're walking around on eggshells and you're afraid that you might say and do the wrong thing constantly, which you could be humiliated, called out, or it, perhaps even literally physically brutalized, that is a controlling method. That is a controlling mechanism. It has nothing to do with spirituality or love. I'm not talking about when, you know, if you're out of line and you overstep reasonable boundaries like uh, putting your hands where they don't belong on other people or in their pockets and things like that or being disorderly, that's different. But this is about fear that you might stand out different. Everybody has to conform because conformity is very important. You're made to be afraid. Just, I don't want them to notice me. Let it be somebody else. So you see the bullying aspect. So the fourth one is fear. Now there are many things that constitute cult behavior, but fear is very important. Fear and intimidation is very important. And I will give you the fifth one. The fifth one, for me, it stands out very much. The fifth one is the thought that of typically the leader or leader group, or perhaps the group as a whole, will impress it upon you that even the things that you know and that they teach that are right and wrong, that it is acceptable. Indeed, it is imperative that you go against those things 
if you are so ordered to do. In other words, you are taught, not necessarily by the printed page of whatever guidebooks or sacred writings they have, but verbally, whatever they say, even though it's illegal, even though it's harmful, potentially, no matter what it is, you need to do it because the ends justify the means. We have these goals. And yes, we want to be good and we want to be pure and everything, but uh, only if that doesn't get in our way. So even all the good things that we may have told you about life is sacred, be a peaceable person, be an honest person, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if I tell you to do something that goes completely opposite, even to our teaching, not just society in general, but even to our teaching, our professed teaching. If I tell you to, to do something that is dangerous, that is illegal, that is even violent, or very um, questionable, very immoral, if I tell you to do it, you need to do it without questioning because the ends justify the means. The ends justify the means. So you don't have to worry about right or wrong because the ends justify the means. And you're supposed to be so impressed with your teacher that's telling you this, even though the basic tenets of that group or religion, if it's a religion or philosophy, is actually the opposite. But because this person or group of people telling you, but if I tell you to go against this, yeah, we hear about right or wrong, but if I tell you, to do something wrong, it's right, because I told you, and the ends justify the means. And you keep saying, let's just say, you keep saying, but right is right and wrong is wrong, and we want to do what is right. Yes, but if I tell you the ends justify the means, and they kind of puff, they're like, you know me, I'm telling you this. That's cult. Some of us have witnessed that up close and been like, what? <laughs> that is cult behavior. Run. Run from that. Ease away if you, that's the only way you can do it. Whereas if you run, you'll be obvious and you, you know what I mean? Ease out, run, get away from that. Because that's cult behavior. And I'm saying, whether it's the practice of a group or if it's the practice of a group that is within a bigger group, but that has sectioned itself off, you know, don't tell the other people this is us. You have to get away from people that are tell you the ends justify the means, no matter what it is, to, to break the law, to be unethical, to do something immoral, the ends justify the means, that it's pure cult behavior. And guess who will be paying for that? Not the person who puffed up and told you you have to do it because the ends justify the means. You'll be the one paying for it. You'll have uh, been the prey of a cult and you have to pay the price. So avoid that. Be careful. Use the sense that the Lord gave you. Right and wrong is right and wrong for a reason. Don't let people play games with you. God is love. Some of you don't believe in God. I'm not going to wrestle with you about it. No. That's up to you. My rights are my rights, and your rights are your rights, and we don't overstep those boundaries. But for those who are believers in God, God is love. God doesn't try to trick you. God doesn't play games, no matter what people say. So, I encourage you to review that, and I will likely talk about more stuff, but I felt like keep it simple, keep it brief, keep it practical. I hope it helps you. I have been wanting to talk about this for a long time because I've been around for a long time, and I've seen and heard a lot of stuff. There's a lot more I have to tell you. Did I tell you about that time I was so miserable at home, the home that I grew up in, barely legal myself? And I almost ran off with a famous, infamous cult. Did I tell you about that? I didn't. 
that's uh, for another time. Not the next video, but for another time. Yeah, it's, I'm glad we're having these conversations. See you next time. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you were subscribed but became unsubscribed, I still love you, but could you resubscribe again? All right, love you. Bye-bye.